all right guys welcome to c programming okay so today we're looking at a brief introduction to c all right so let's get started so c is actually a high level programming language so it's a high level programming language that is actually general purpose and is very very popular like very very popular okay and it's actually close to the human language because it is readable by us humans can read it and understand it not just see alone any high level languages like you know python javascript they are human readable because since we use english to write them so they are readable okay so that is actually why we call them high level languages all right so c is an example of an high level language so there's also what we call the low level language so example of a low level language are the machine languages so those ones are the low level languages okay so those are low level languages so um what this stuff mean is that uh see like what you are coding on in your code editor for example okay you're actually coding in english in a way okay you're coding in english and computer doesn't understand english only thing computer understand is one and zero which is like binary so binary codes so that is the only thing um, computer understands all right then this our c language or whatever coding language you are using is also is what we call the source code so we get what we call the source code which is your what you are putting in your code editor okay your codes while well, there's something called the binary codes so this binary code is gotten through the source code okay whereby the program is compiled or an interpreter is used to break it down into binary codes so that computer can understand what you are actually trying to produce out all right so the advantages of high level languages are that it is readable you know since we are using english to write it so it is readable and it is portable also okay so it is portable in the sense that i can save the file and i can send it to someone there's someone else who opens in their own computer and their own code editor and still do what they want to do with it all right now me sending you a binary code that pertains only to my system then carrying it to another system it may not work all right so that is why it is actually portable this way all right so each high level language is always each high level language needs either a compiler or an interpreter okay so but for c language c uses compiler all right so c uses compiler we don't use interpreter here so we use compiler so the compiler compiles our source code which is your, your code in your code editors compiles our source code convert it to a binary code that is machine readable that is the machine language the low level language that is the binary code all right so that's it so we've talked about what C languages means we've talked about its advantages we've talked about source code and binary code you understand the difference now very clearly and the smallest unit of binary code is bytes i mean bits rather so the smallest unit of binary code is called bits okay so bits is just like either zero or one all right so we just know that one byte makes eight bits okay so eight bits are one byte all right so just know that conversion stuff so that's it about that so many other high level languages have been developed based on c for example Perl language is developed based on c also c plus plus is just like an extension added feature in c programming all right so don't forget um this the two type of programming language we have the one that involves using a compiler to compile the language they have one down which we can use the interpreter to interpret the language so for c programming specifically we are using a compiler all right so let's look at how to write our basic c program so we're going to do a quick hello world right now all right so let's see how to go about that let me show you how a basic C program looks like. So this is a good example. So I want to be, I'll be touching each of the features for you to understand each of them, all right? So let's go. 
Then now, if you look at this first part, um, actually this file, I named my file test.c. So always name your file with that extension .c. For example, if you are doing HTML, you name it .html. If you are doing CSS, you name it .css. If you are doing JavaScript, you name it .js. All right. So now you are dealing with C programming language, so you are going to end it with .c. Okay. So I choose to name, name it whatever name I want to name it, but make sure your extension ends with .c. All right. So that's the first thing I can say here. Then the next thing here, I'm actually using code blocks just so you know the editor I'm using. This is code blocks. Okay, so the next line here, I actually wrote a send a statement here which I commented. So there's something called comments. If I clean this now, I can see this quite how it looks like normally. But if I use this um command to make it look in this format, so there's something called comments in programming. So what comment does is that it's just a way to like explain your code like write some kind of information so that you won't get confused whereby you want to review your code or you send your code to someone else to look at it so they can understand where which portion means of your code so it should not be jam-packed with only code without someone get, getting to really understand where you place some certain things so there are two ways of writing comments in c so we have the multi-line comments whereby you do your forward slash you use forward slash then the asterisk then puts your line of comments there this is actually multi-line comments format so which means you can still click enter here and still be writing your comments then if you want to close it then you close it with the star and the forward slash so everything will be closed like this but there's also a single line comment so this first one like i said is the multi-line the multi-line comments okay so there's also a single line single line comments so for single line comments we just need to do um four slash two times okay four slash two times so let me just show you an example this is actually where well, since this is a one line sentence i can choose to also use um double um forward slash double forward slash since the line and statement maybe it's a multi-line you need to use this exact stuff that i did for example if i click enter now you can see how it still continues that way if i click enter here the comment still continues okay but since it's a one line, I can as well choose to use the other single line comment since this is just a one line sentence. So I'll just put the double forward slash and can, can choose to erase this. And see, it still show me the same comment format. But if I then click enter to a new line, if you notice it has depth that comment section. Okay, so that's why you need to know the two between the multi line and the single line comments to so now to utilize them better. So that's what comments is. And whenever your compiler is compiling your code, it will ignore this comment so this comment is not really adding to your the size of your memory at all so it's not adding to the size of your file at all it's just something that we like it shows something that will disappear in a way so it's just for only you that is writing to the code for you to understand what you are doing so that's just the purpose of comments so moving on we have something here which we are saying here which is called include then we add something called stdio.h now this include is actually a directive, so you will learn more about that later on. Okay, so what it does is that there's actually a standard file, like an ANSI standard header files for C programs. Okay, so what those header files does is that they have some kind of features that they can perform. Okay, they have several functions that they can perform that whereby once you use it in your, if you call them here, you are able to use them in this place. Okay. Don't worry, it might not really make much sense to you, but you will really get to understand it better. But what the summary of what this stuff means is that this hash include, we are trying to include that header files, which we are not really seeing here, but it's actually stored inside. Okay, okay, it's stored inside the compiler in a way. Okay, so it is called stored inside the GCC compiler in a way. So the header file is stored inside there, so we are including it inside. This is our main code here, which is our test.c. Okay, so instead of us writing the raw header files here, which it doesn't really make sense to make it to make the code too long, so we choose to store it inside a file called stdio.h. Then we include it in using this format include. So you always need to write this include in your C code. It's very very important. So there are actually many. It's not just stdio. There are actually a lot of them. Okay, so it just depends on what you are working on. There's also maths maths as a mathematics maths.h. So it depends on just what you are what, what you are trying to achieve in your code. All right. So that's just what the include directive does. All right. And that's what 
the whole concept of header files is all about so sometimes we call it dot h files because they are saved there their name ends with dot h as you can see here dot h so anyhow um let me just say one more thing though like for example um remember i said we have several dot h files we have the stdio which actually means standard inputs and outputs so we have a file that is also a one that is maths dot h this one's a standard like standard header files in c now you can choose to make your own user header files okay you can choose to create your own header files but for you to do that you want to call it in your code instead of using this angle bracket we are using in the in this one's above we want to use angle bracket this time we are going to use double quotation mark so you will now put the name of the header file you choose to name that your header file that you created for yourself okay for example now main dot h so you will now see this header these quotations in between them so it's a way of calling them in your include okay so it's now look like this include main dot h all right so that's just a wrap up about this whole header file and include stuff but you'll learn better about it in the later part when you really start c programming all right so now looking at the next part we have our main function so this main function is actually like is a compulsory thing to be in your c program like you must always have this main function now the more what is running like no other code is running in your code aside from this main function so if the main function is missing and you create other functions your c program wants to run at all it's not located anything so all your code starts running from main and it ends with this main okay so that means if you have other functions outside of main you will need to call them in a way inside this main because the only the c and the compiler and the compiler is only focused on the main function only just keep that in the back of your mind okay and in default like by default main function is actually an integer um it's actually an integer variable in a way okay so it's an integer function rather all right but by default it's already stored that way so we don't need to put that int you might not understand what this int means and all this integer thing but you understand later don't worry so just know that main function is very very important to be in your code like you must always have it here so the, your program will start and end with the main function okay so that's where there's that's where to execute okay so the execution will focus on only the main function okay i can see the way i wrote the main function just write your main put your two brackets and um, sometimes you may see some people something like void like that there's nothing inside there but actually there should be something but you will learn about that later on okay but for this case you don't really necessarily need to put that stuff there so i chose to leave it that way so you can leave it as void you can just clean the void and leave it empty like that then put your brackets okay so opening your opening bracket and your closing coily brackets okay coily brackets then all your code will be in between them all right so all the codes are really in between the opening and the closing bracket of my main function all right so that's it about the main function so what should we talk next about okay now talking about this print f i will look i'm not talking much about this print f, but i just wanted to understand that what print f does is that it brings out the outputs of your code so we can see a test of how it works or what we're really doing okay so it's just a way of us viewing it printing it out to the screen for us to see it all right and yeah i wrote a text called hello world okay which is usually the <laughs> common test used when learning new new language all right then if you notice something here there's this back slash n so the back slash n like this this actually means new line so it is creating a new line for us so whenever i write once i run this hello world it will create a new line after a new mc line after right so let's just mm, let's just see a quick view about let's just see a, a look of how it looks like but before that i want you to understand that this print f function the reason we can use this print f function is because print f is inside this our stdio.h header so you can see why this include is very important to include those functions inside our main program all right so let me just quickly build this you can see we have hello world i can see the gap between here the gap between here is actually that back um backslash n that i used okay so even if i put more of it for example you will see how to push it down the more so let me run this again 
you can see the gap here now so that's just how that's what the new line character does okay so nothing special as much so the last part and mind you always close your prince air with this um semicolon at the end if there's no semicolon to tell you there's an error in your code it won't output for you okay so don't forget to always put the semicolon there to make it a statement right so you understand space what statement means and all of that later on we are just in the introductory part from now so the last part here we're looking at return a return statement so return statements is what we often use when we're in our main function okay so we just use this return statement in the statements above you can see we're going to return zero that indicates that zero is returned from the main function and the program is terminated normally okay which means there was no error at all everything runs smoothly okay in the main function that's what it means so we often use that to make return zero just to say that everything works smoothly and it is terminated normally so there's no bug or whatever error in your code so sometimes if we may choose to then use another function called the exit function but for us to use this exit function like for example something like exits and you see something like zero there this exit function for us to apply it which means we need to add another include file because exit function is under another library which is called st stdlib.h so it's under header file like that all right so you can see it still ran successfully for us okay so for now let's focus on the return zero is always I can advise to use return zero, okay? Because there will always be this STDIO function. So let's leave it as return zero. So this is the wrap up of our first C program. At least you've learned how to run a simple C program in code. And just to test it on your by yourself, I'm actually using code blocks. Can use some other um, editors to also play around this, like programmers and the likes. All right. I hope you understand this video very well. See you in the next video. We'll talking about compilation process. Bye.